Well, the time has come to start putting this back together again. I've got all laid out in the order it came out on, but I need to get these cleaned up. They've got, you know, old oil and some sort of dust and stuff. These were covered, but they're still still need to be cleaned up. And then I need to figure out if I've got these in the right order and then put them back in the lathe. So I'm going to start getting them cleaned up and putting them back in. So these are all cleaned up. Hopefully I've got them in the right order. So this stands up and goes on there and then it has to go through because I have to go through all the sections in the right order because the shift dog rings go there and there. So, oh actually I just realized I should clean this up a little bit more. There's some divots where the set screws went so I should file those smooth. So I'll do that and then uh, get it cleaned up. I just noticed there's gouges in here, probably from when the shaft got taken out, got dragged by, so I'm going to clean those up. So I think this is attempt number two. Uh, it's probably going to take up more than that to, uh, to get this in. Oh yeah, I need to get that big gear in first. All right. So yeah, I need to get this big front gear set in place and then get this other shaft in. I think the center bearing needs to go further in, but I, I think that might be able to happen somewhat later. Does that push in by hand or do you have to? I've been tapping on it slowly, but I didn't want to put it in too far. Yeah. Is it going to get pushed in by the shaft? Eventually. So I was hoping. You think that's what's holding you up? I don't know. What I'm thinking now is these splines here, there's a set of splines there, those need to get down to there. Okay. And they need to get through this bearing here. Right. And they're a pretty close fit. So I suspect that's what's holding us up. Right. Could, if you have it wrong, could they drive the bearing all the way through this housing? Is there something in the shoulder? No, there's no shoulder. So the bearing could come in too far. Is this the bearing right here that you see? Yeah. That's the outer. Well, yeah. Down between, down in. N you're not really seeing the bearing now. You look more from the side. It's a big bearing. It's okay. You see it? Right. So this part we're seeing has to go through the bearing. That ring, that one, yeah. That ring sits up up against the bearing. This shaft here, that's oh, that a, that's ring, a ring. That ring is part of this gear. It's a separate spacer, but right. Yeah. So that spaces it out to be the right. You see, this gear is back too far. Right. But oh. this, the splines you see down in there. Yep. Those go through the gear and through everything.
working on getting this shaft installed. Um, there's a pin here that holds on a ring that, that positions this end gear. Now, one important thing about that pin is despite Monarch being known for their super high quality lathes, this pin or the, the collar has to be rotated the correct orientation around. So if you put it in the wrong way around, the pin hole doesn't line up and then you get the pin jammed halfway in the hole and your life is miserable because then you can't pull it out because you can't pound it down because it hits the bottom of the case and it, you can't move the shaft out because the gear is now stuck on. So uh, doubly check that this pin is in the right spot. A couple of the other gears need some arranging. This gear is too far that way because the center bearing here um, isn't in quite the right spot. There's no good marking for where that is. Um, then these, I need all the, the locking positioning collars put in place for the rest. I've got the back bearing installed, but I'm going to install the front bearing here and then that should you know, position everything nicely, you know, left and right, so I can adjust. Um, so I can get everything set on the shaft. But yeah, I don't have any leftover pieces. I've got all the rings on, and I think it's all the right order. It all makes sense. Bearing in here, a skinny, just regular ball bearing, tall and skinny ball. And that, I think, is in slightly the wrong spot. It should just tap over. But, you know, I wasn't sure where it needed to be in the case. In, in the inside of that, there's a, a ring that goes on the inside to step up the shaft size. So there's a lot of little pieces in here as far as rings and collars and stuff. And I'm fairly sure I got it all back in the right, um, right orientation. But we will find out in uh, probably a couple, couple weeks at the rate I'm going. So the oil on this seems a bit gummy. It's a, this was a new old stock bearing, so I'm going to run it through the parts washer, just rinse it really quick, and then put my own oil on it. So I'm ready to start putting the set screws back in these rings here. Um, they position the gears um, left and right, they stop them from moving. So I need to get, um, well there's one here and one here. This gear is positioned by the end of these splines and then this bearing and this gear is positioned, well this one would float over the, the splines, so this one's positioned by the ring and this one's positioned by this end collar and also another step in the shaft. So we're all set. Um, I got the bearings installed using the same shims and it seems pretty good. It's, you can't really get the end play on this because both ends are capped and there's nothing really fixed to the shaft except for these rings via set screws. Anyway, so it seems like it's gonna be, be just fine. And this shaft, if it has a little bit of play, doesn't really matter as long as it's not super loose or super tight. So now I've got three different places it could go because there's three set screws. That one lines up. Now that one lines up. Oh wait, no, phew, all three line up now. So. So I should have inspected this closer when I had it together, when I had it all apart, but there's this divot here, and there's another one on the other side, and it almost looks like there's a broken tip of a set screw in there. So I'm gonna see if it is, and see if I can get that out. Um, there's another one around on the other side, because the set screws on this ring are definitely replacements. One of them 
has a point ground on it rather than just being a regular normal nipple point. So Monarch didn't have some guy hand grind a point on a set screw. So that one's been replaced. So I'm going to try to get that out. Oh hey, that's a pin. Go all the way through. Jeez. Oh, it does. So this one is possibly held on by a pin. There's set screws and a pin. <laughs> so this clearly, the threads are really munged up on it and barely in there. So that's also doesn't look factory. I'm wondering if this is supposed to be another pin with two cotter pins in the, on it, like it's done on the end. Maybe a pin on one side. And yeah, that does go through there, so. Because there just needs to be clearance between the ring here and that, so you could do a pin set up like down on the other end. So down in there, there's another pin about the same diameter as the one I have. And it's just got a cotter pin on both sides. So I'm wondering if that's what's supposed to be here versus the two set screws. I'm gonna take a look and see if I can see in the parts break down what it shows for that other area. I have the pin done for the retaining ring. It was probably originally just a pin with set screws on both sides, but I happened to have a piece which was half an inch in diameter and that's what I needed for the shoulder, for this head. So I figured I'd just put a head on one side and then drill a hole for the um, cotter pin on the other side. I'm a little disappointed this came out a little bit undersized because I did it on my other lathe and I was taking too heavy of a cut so it cut too much on the last pass. But rather than redo it, it's only a couple thousand small so it should be fine for this. It's going to be better than the loose set screws that were in there before. So I'm going to get this installed. I'm going to have to go back and look at the footage, but actually I think this drive dog is in backwards because the center, the, the holes in the ring look fairly centered and it's not off by that much. So um, I think, and this, when this hits, it hits, and there's a fair amount, a uh, fairly large gap there. And also there's a set screw which is about to bottom out down here. So I think that's wrong. And also looking at the way, this engages. You got a short, a long side matching with a short side, and a long side matching with a short side, and all the other ones are long to long, short to short. So this side over here, long to long, short to short, long to long, short to short, long to long, short to short.
needs its pin. But yeah, so we should be. Should we put this back in? Yeah, because I was afraid if we got it all in that we couldn't get enough movement to get that engaged. So I'm just yeah. going to tell you about it honestly. <laughs> but yeah, so those should. Well. See that engages. It goes all the way up. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'd like to see that. Yeah. And no weird clunking. Now this goes all the way. Should engage all the way the other way. Yeah. Better. Yeah. Back to where we were two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> So this project's almost done. I still do have a couple more videos to make about this. Um, I've got to obviously install the main shaft and get it running. And there's a couple other issues with the clutch that I'm trying to figure out. So subscribe to follow along with the rest of this project. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like. If you don't, uh, let me know. And hope you subscribe and share.